Hello, welcome back to week 3. This is Burahla here. Today we are going to talk about something called the affective filter and its relation to self-awareness. Do you know what it means to be self-aware? Self-awareness is the ability to see yourself or perhaps imagine yourself from someone else's viewpoint, like seeing yourself in a mirror. Self-awareness is something that evolves over time, meaning that kids are usually less self-aware and adults more self-aware. Now, let me ask you an impossible question. I love impossible questions. Is it good or bad to be self-aware? Well, let's think about it. On the positive side, Self-awareness gives you the chance to know how you look, how you feel, why you feel what you feel. You have a certain amount of confidence because you know you look and sound pretty good. On the negative side, self-awareness can sometimes be paralyzing. Sometimes, and especially in new environments, you think so much about yourself, who you are, and what you are doing that you have increased anxiety and lose your confidence. So, let's imagine together the story of a teenager named Ahmed. When Ahmed was 16 years old, he had big glasses, big hair and a big dream. He wanted to be a singer and he wanted to join a nationally recognized group called the Music Machine. Ahmed signed up for auditions to join the group and the day before his audition his friend Musa invited him to his house so that he could memorize one of uh, his audition songs called Under the Sea. The music director and the choreographer sat behind the table in the back of a long dark auditorium. On the table was a microphone directly beside the table and the two people was a large stage light. When he walked into the stage, he already had butterflies in his stomach. The director spoke and the microphone crackled. Wherever you are ready, he said. The music began and he had 60 seconds to convince them that he could sing. The problem was, he was so frightened, he couldn't remember a single line. In fact, earlier that day, he started forgetting his lines to the point that he had everything written on his hands. Now, with that stage light directly into his face, he couldn't even read what was in his hands, because sweat had begun to smear the words. So, what did he do? He stood there, staring into his hands, letting the 60 seconds of music go by him as he awkwardly tried to stammer out a few nonsensical words to a song originally sung by a crab. So, please remember, uh, Ahmed was 16 years old teenager and he desperately wanted to be cool. And this was about the not coolest thing he had ever experienced. He was convinced that anyone that saw him had thought that he had absolutely no business ever being on a stage. Now, what does this have to do with learning a language? And what does it have to do with self-awareness? Now, we try to imagine this story together in order to illustrate a feeling many of your learners share. In many ways, learning a new language gives students a peculiar kind of self-awareness. In language learning, self-awareness means you are aware of your accent, your grammar mistakes, and how well you are doing at communicating your idea. In a sense, learning a language is a lot like being on a stage, and learners are trying to perform something for the very first time, and that can be very uncomfortable. Stephen Krashen, the famous ESL theorist, explains this concept using the term affective filter. The affective filter, he explains, 
refers to the complex emotions your students might have as they process all this new information and try to produce language. In short, when your affective filter is high, it means you are feeling a lot of emotions. Annoyance, anger, frustration, or anxiety. And when your affective filter is low, it means you aren't nearly so stressed, so the flow of information can come more easily. Let's discuss. During Ahmed's audition, what level was his affective filter? It was off the charts. He couldn't remember simple things that he had accomplished very easily the day before. Having to produce what he already knew became impossible because he had focused so much on himself and on his possible mistakes that he couldn't remember a thing. So what does this mean for a language teacher? Well, let's start with the fact that we as language teachers can never forget how hard it is to learn and perform something new and how difficult it can be to perform in front of those that are judging us. Recognize that the affective filter, especially in classroom settings, can be particularly high. And that you as a teacher must create an environment to help lower that filter and give learners confidence to remember the material that they have prepared and studied. In the next lessons, we will discuss some effective ways to lower the affective filter and invite students to take more risks. Thanks for listening and see you in the next lesson.